It is 6 o'clock on a Friday morning. We are talking about gas prices. Why? Why? Because Why? they are going up. Oh. So there was a military conflict in the Middle East. We've been talking about it all week. Yep. And it has been causing gas prices to rise here in the U.S. It has. We could be looking at a 5 to 10 cents hike this week, up to 25 cents more by the end of the month. Every day we want you to be a part of the conversation. Today we're asking you... Do gas prices affect your travel plans? Like, does it have any impact at all? Right now, 78% of you are saying no, but we want to hear from you on it. I, I was thinking about not coming in today. <laughs> that four miles times how much mm. it would have cost me like nine cents. And I, you know, I'm trying to. You trying to? I'm trying <laughs> to get, get in. You got kids. You're trying to send the college That's and right. stuff at some point. Okay, I'm going to say Nan. She says it affects my ability to pay my bills, having to commute to work, mm -hmm. more money for gas, less for bills. That is why, as a traffic reporter, for the past six years, every week I press for gas prices because it saves somebody money and less stress Whoa. for your bills and your work. I am adamant about it. It is a no, I always do it. And I'm she sorry. She is I, not playing. I, I, she is real about listen, this. It's real. I have been on an interview, going on an interview and only had change to get to the interview. I hear you. Just barely getting by. That's why we do gas prices. The struggle so, is real. I was Mike thinking Trump. you were about to say, and that's why at this time I am announcing my candidacy. <laughs> She got my vote. Wow. Thank you. Right. I, I love you, Nan. There it is. Brittany Begley is now in the race. Not all precincts are reporting right now, though. Okay, <laughs> let's get to all your local and national top stories. We call it the Daily Blend. Rob, how's the forecast for the weekend? You know, this is going to be one of these classic, awesome weekends because next week we officially start fall, which is great. It's a great mental escape. Uh, from, from where we've been for this long, hot summer, one of the top 10 hottest summers we've seen on record for June, July, and August. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, where we're going is, is definitely warmer, but it's not record-breaking or anything like that until maybe next week. So there's going to be some changes. Highs yesterday, 80 degrees. Yep, another awesome day. We should be in the upper 80s, and we're going to inch closer to that today. We're already starting to see a bit of a warm-up this morning, but still cool this morning. So we sort of have two things happening. Cool in the morning, nice but warmer in the afternoon by about 5 degrees. So I do think that you'll notice that along with the winds out of the northwest. And you know what? It's not just the valley spots. All locations are warming up today. Uh, even the Sierra, which saw a bit of rain yesterday, about two one hundredths of an inch of rain for South Lake Tahoe. So mid 80s today, about 90 tomorrow, about 90 on Monday, mid 90s for Tuesday, Wednesday, then a drastic cool down into the 70s with rain chances by the end of next week. So we're on a bit of a ride, but right now we're going up for the next few days. Brittany? All right, at 6.03, we continue to follow breaking news. We've been updating you since the newscast started out 4.30. If you live or work in the Folsom area, we have an accident you have to know about. A portion of Bidwell is shut down near Oak Avenue Parkway after a deadly accident. Earlier this morning, a woman hit a tree. You're going to see delays for the police investigation as well. A lot of debris in the roadway. As you head out, you want to take Empire Ranch Road to avoid some delays. And we've been checking in with the police department during the commercial break. I'll let you know when all lanes open. We also started the newscast with bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Tracy to Livermore, 205 to 580. Uh, earlier this morning, you were looking at two hours. We're now at 56 minutes, so at least we're making progress while in that area. All right, Brittany, 604, thank you. We now know how long the teen who shot and killed Grant High School student and football player J.J. Clavo will spend behind bars at most four years. Clavo's mother, Nicole, was in juvenile court yesterday as Kimonte Lindsay was sentenced. Lindsay was 15 years old when he shot and killed J.J. Clavo. Lindsay's now 19. Because of a new California law, though, he will not be charged as an adult. That means he could be out of prison by age 23. Had he been charged as an adult, he could have gotten 87 years to life in prison. We talked to Dr. Nicole Clavo over the phone. She told us she was prepared to hear her son's killer would receive a short sentence, but to her, it was still unsettling. We also heard from the killer's mother, who sympathizes with the Clavo family, but still says there wasn't enough evidence to convict her son. Well, this morning, we're getting an update from Sacramento State University about what happened with the 3,500 students that accidentally were accepted into the school. Carlos Herrera live at Sac State with why students fear the mistake will impact pretty much everybody on campus. What are they worried about, Carlos? Well, a lot of things, actually. We first told you about this story earlier this week. I heard from a lot of students here at Sac State through Facebook and through email. They say they were not happy about the university's mistake because it would impact negatively everyone here at the university because it would result in longer wait lists, full classes or closed classes altogether. But this morning, the university coming out and giving us an update saying 
students have nothing to worry about. They also explained what exactly happened in this situation. Here's what we know about the situation so far. We know 3,500 students were accidentally admitted. The university recognized the mistake but honored those admissions. Only 700 of those students actually enrolled in classes, which led to other current students concerned about full classes some of them weren't able to enroll in. There can always be some folks who don't get the classes they want when they want them right away. Uh, but that doesn't have anything to do with, with this. The university anticipates growth every year and these 700 new students aren't considered extra but rather filling available space at the university. A Sac State spokesperson says that the university has added more faculty and more classes this year but that's not a response to the accidental admissions but rather just due to the year-to-year -year expected growth. Walt, we'll send it back over to you. So, so Carlos, somebody pushed the button to instead of uh, everybody come to the uh, check it out the school barbecue push the button yeah. that everybody gets in is that what happened pretty much a clerical <laughs> mistake by a staff member sending an invitation to 3500 students inviting them to an admittance event back in march you asked uh, in the last hour what happened to that staff member we asked that question no word yet on what happened to that staff member okay i mean you know mistakes happen just wondered if if uh if that was not the first time, maybe. So we'll check back. Carlos, thank you. Live at Sac State 700 uh, taking the invitation. All right, let's get to some other top stories right now in your Daily Blend. Pepper spray for groundskeepers. That's the call from union leaders this morning after three attacks by homeless people on workers at the state capitol. Workers say they've been punched, scratched, and had their hair pulled. CHP handles security at all state buildings. They say they'll ramp up patrols in the area thousand year flood. That's what experts are calling the deadly flooding in Texas that's killed at least two people. It comes as the remnants of tropical storm Imelda poured more than 40 inches of rain in some parts of the state. It's been relentless and we just can't escape. It's like we're on an island here. Much of the flooding is in places that were hit by Hurricane Harvey two years ago. PG&E rate hikes starting the first of October. Customers are going to start paying more for their utilities. Rates are going up $3 for electricity and $1.70 for gas every month. The company says the extra money will cover the cost of past wildfires and upgrading its infrastructure. That's your daily blend. If you have something you want to share with us, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10.